to further cement the rumors that have been out there about Call of Duty Black Ops 6, it has been officially confirmed today, as well as being confirmed for Game Pass day and date. Now, this is very big news for the Game Pass faithful who post APK deal and the whole court trial and all that other stuff, was expecting those games to come to the platform, not only quickly, but again, day one into Game Pass. Now, the first part is taking some time. However, Call of Duty is now going to be day one into the service. And there's just not a bunch of people excited about this. Some Call of Duty faithful that are not necessarily Xbox or Game Pass fans, they're sparking a debate versus those that are happy about this. The question looms now because of this debate um, re regarding how good this is for the franchise. You know what I'm saying? Is this good for the overall health and quality of the IP? So let's examine. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor. It's your boy MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, and Hard Knock Digital Culture. Do us a huge favor. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please. This is The Spill. And today on The Spill, we are asking the question, what Call of Duty Day 1 and Game Pass does to the franchise, all right? So back to this debate. So we're gonna break this up in a couple of parts. First, I, I wanna explain why we feel, or I feel at the very least, let me speak for myself, that they had no choice, okay? Now, admitting, admittingly, this is hyperbolic. I mean, they did have a choice, but if you figure that more than anything, Satya Nadella, the head of Microsoft, who is the parent company, and by all intents and purposes, is the guy that's running everything now um, in regards to Xbox or just leading the charge, I, I believe, more fiercely than Phil is um, at the moment. We all should know by now that Satya wants two things out of all of his divisions more than anything. He wants subscription and cloud growth for all divisions. And so because of that, this had to happen. You think about it this way. If th they may not be able to make a whole bunch of money off of Game Pass and, and, and converting people from buying a PlayStation and buying a, a game, going to Game Pass instead. But what they could do at the very least are those that do not have Game Pass on the Xbox ecosystem or on the PC ecosystem to now jump into Game Pass. They can at least further that 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 olive branch and make Call of Duty a lot more accessible to those gamers who are like a hop, skip, and a jump away from Game Pass. And, you know, a lot of people will say, well, they're going to cannibalize sales. That is true. But again, Satya is banking the future of their business sector on subscriptions and cloud and in all other sectors he's successful in this stint so that's why they the investors and stuff love him now a bigger question looms does this mean success for xbox because gaming is different than atypical software and that's a bigger question that we're not going to be able to answer today i don't think we are but at the very least, we got to understand the mindset of the guy that's in charge and who is driving the ship right now. He wants subscription services boosted more than anything. And I think we can all agree, regardless of how cannibalistic it is, this will definitely boost Game Pass subscriptions to a certain degree. Again, Will it convert PlayStation people over? I, I, I don't believe so, but I, I do feel at the very least, you will have people that are on game. I mean, that, that, have, that have Game Pass right in front of them on PC, and more importantly, more of those that are on Xbox um, that will convert over and stop Game Pass growth from being so stagnant, okay? And anything to help out their their numbers <laughs> going, into the, going into future quarters, they're gonna need it, so. There you have it. Satya Nadella wants those Game Pass numbers still. All right. Also, 
as crazy as it sounds, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on here. As crazy as it sounds, a, a free to play ex defiant may have forced her hand. Now you're, you're probably listening to me and you're like, MM, shut the heck up, but hear me out. Hold on, hear me out. I want you guys to take a look at something. Check this out. All right, so this right here, I showed you another <laughs> another slide that's not really, well, it's part of what we have to talk about today in the podcast, but this is the slide more relative to what I gotta say now. These are the top 50 games that are being played on Xbox right now. And if you look at the top 10, these are the top 10, all right? Call of Duty is a number two, but right there in the top 10, this short after launch, number eight is X Defiant. That is some growth for your behind, all right? And being that X Defiant is, look at this, is free, that would be very embarrassing if their number one franchise that they own that they own right now somehow was running neck and neck with X Defiant or if X Defiant surpasses it. If X Defiant is number two or even number one, like if it continues to grow in popularity, there are people that have some criticisms of X Defiant, but they're saying positive things because um, they're, they like the approach of the studio head and they like the direction and the things that they're saying to the gamers. It's very well possible, but that these two games could be battling for second or first on Xbox. That would be very embarrassing, especially after they spent so much money on Call of Duty for free to play X Defiant to take the reins in the top ranking on Xbox. So you may have had a situation to where we've heard rumors that there was internal debates and those internal debates may have went in the favor of the Xbox faithful like Phil Spencer, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty, who I, I think would favor this type of move. Um, and it and it could have been that way because of X Defiant. So you, you may call a duty, Black Ops 6, you make it um, essentially free to pay, play at very least on your platform. Again, I don't think that they're looking for uh, you know, sales to be cannibalized on PlayStation. I don't think they want that. I mean, they may prefer that if that was going to happen, but it, it, it's either all or nothing. If if like 70 to 80% of the PlayStation faithful are not going to convert over, they'd rather just have the sales. They don't want to just see like a 10% drop off and a 10% conversion because they're losing money on that. So unless they're going to see mass conversion, which you're not going to see for Call of Duty alone because it's in Game Pass, They'd rather just continue to have those sales on those platforms and just have their very own subscriber base and their PC base. Keep Call of Duty ahead, far ahead enough of X Defiant. Okay. So that's my ten full hat theory, but I do think it's relevant to the discussion at hand. Now, the bigger part of that debate is what are the, gonna be the effects on quality? Um, well, look, here, let, let's be honest here. This has already been labeled a DLC type game. The last game was a 58 Metacritic, right? And the and user scores are abysmal. This is, this is where I wanted to show you this, okay? Look at the user scores on Xbox. This is two out of five, all right? This is, this is abysmal, okay? We can't talk about no review bombing and all that silly stuff here. It's just bad, okay? Now, and Xbox itself isn't known for enhancing games. So under these circumstances, I personally say, why not? Just, you, you have nothing to lose, at least with this game. But here's my conclusion. I, I don't think that the move will have immediate impact on the title or on the IP. I think it's, you know, something that they had to do because the reputational risk after alluding that this stuff would come day and date to Game Pass would be bad, at least for this iteration. I, I, again, I think the current plan is to subsidize Game Pass, uh, you know, by the sales on, on multi-plat platforms, and at the very least, they stay ahead of X Defiant. Um, 
But what is telling for me is that the overall quality is going to be probably the same abysmal quality that's really not going to bring in a whole lot of new people that's going to d- disappoint, you know, the faithful, but they'll still remain faithful. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, uh, also, to, to culminate that, th- this version is still going to be cross-gen. You know what I'm saying? So what improvements are you going to really get, gonna get? But I will say this to close out. If X Defiant can find a way to get its ish together, the hit detection criticisms and all that stuff, if they can get their ish together, and with the subsequent follow-up and updates to that game, Call of Duty could be in trouble in the future, but only time will tell. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below, because like we always say, who cares what I think? Again, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you if you want more. And click those links because they'll lead you to Geeks, Cloud Dose, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and MM2K Gaming. Till next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.